Yuri, I had really two introductions to you, one many years before the other. The first was your book on cubic forms, which I read right at the beginning of my learning about algebraic geometry, and the second was in Toledo when we wandered the streets together. Do you remember that time? Yes, of course, I remember very well. Cubic Forms was my first book. Before that, I planned to write something like Lectures on Algebraic Geometry and even started it. But then yeah. it turned out that a lot of people are engaged uh, in this project, Manafort, and I think maybe Harris, and never so I, Hartshorn, so I decided to hell with it <laughs> and I'll write <laughs> something more original. And um, the story is as follows. We have been studying in the 50s in Shafarevich seminar. We have been studying both Grothendieck and classical algebraic geometry of Italians. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to read in Italian Enrico's mm. Superficie Algebrica. And how do you study Italian? <laughs> I, re I read first Dante, then Enriquez, <laughs> <laughs> and then cursed myself. And anyway, so we had a seminar, and um, uh, we have more or less reproduced basic results on classical algebraic surfaces using Grothendieck's language and cohomology and things like that. It was published. Yes, Mystic Love Institute and various the people book. got yeah got various chapters of the classical algebraic geometry. So I somehow got rational surfaces and surfaces close to rational ones, and I started thinking about them deeply. And then I found out that the arithmetic is totally unknown, and uh, in algebraic geometry there is a, a lot of nice things if you don't imagine that your surface is over C, over complex field, but in fact over something like Q. Uh, so I started thinking about it, and uh, uh, the new structures appeared by analogy of cubic surfaces and cubic curves, and it was cumulative move-hung loops. I've never heard about cumulative move-hung loops before. So it was all very fascinating, and I think I wrote most of the book in a suburban train commuting between Moscow and uh, uh, Dacia. <laughs> <laughs> when the book was al already almost printed, I had a nightmare, recurring nightmare. Uh, in my sleep, I enter a bookshop and everywhere, all over the shelves, is sitting my book, nothing more, and nobody buys it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you interpret this dream? No, no, no. I, I never believed in Freud, although I think <laughs> there is a lot of interesting things that he has said, but not literally. <laughs> When this one was so, so obvious, yes. <laughs> there was no need to <laughs> invoke anything complicated. So that was that. You told me that you, some of your recent work is about cubic Yes, cubic yes, just, just last preprint I have put in the archive on January 1st, 2010, was about cubic surfaces because most of the problems I uh, raised then and did not solve then still remain unsolved. Mm -hmm. There is small progress. Um, there is a lot of m lot more uh, numerical experiments because computers are, of course, mm -hmm. much stronger now. So there is a very interesting picture emerging, but almost nothing is proved. It's one of the strange things about computer evidence that sometimes it's a, you find only trivial things, other times you find yeah. things you can't touch. Yeah, like for example, you just count uh, the number of points of bounded size, bounded height, technically speaking, and, and it should be on a cubic surface. And under some conditions, it looks like very much linear function. For cubic curves, for example, it's just a power of logarithm, and here it's a linear function. There is not the least idea how, idea how to prove it. Even the constant is like Birch-Swinnerton-Dyer constant, 
It was a thesis by Emmanuel Peyre, a, a French a young mathematician who attended my course at MIT on this subject matter. <coughs> and then he produced a conjectural formula for the constant. Also computers say, yeah, looks like the correct <laughs> formula, but how to prove it? <laughs> Would you talk a little about your, your preprint and what's in it? The recent one? Yes. Well, I have invented a new, so to speak, new approach to uh, possibly to proof of finite generation. And uh, it's actually as old as, almost as old as mathematics. It, it's based upon the old, old Pappus theorem about configuration, very specific configuration of lines on a projective plane. Mm -hmm. It turned out that this theorem invented 2,000 years ago was then uh, laying forgotten then uh, in the 19th century uh, was embedded into projective geometry very new by that time, then into model theory, and then uh, quite recently in the 90s already in the works by Ruszowski and Zilber became a model theoretic algebraic geometry. So it struck me that probably I can use that. And that was the idea. <laughs>